up, everyone? How's everyone doing this morning? That was weak. How's everyone doing this morning? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. All right. What's up, everyone? My name is Daniel Tuso. I am one of the uh, leaders here, and I'm stoked to be bringing the word uh, for you guys uh, today. Um, We've, for the past couple of weeks, been learning different core values that we have here at JVox. Last week was an awesome message where we learned and talked about how we're, uh, we as JVoxers are real. Uh, then we, before that, we've talked about how we're friendly. Um, and so today, I want to share with you guys another core value. Now, this is a core value, and I'll, I'll, I think this applies to all of our core values. This is something that should go beyond JVox, but this core value here today that we're talking about is one that I think that that we really must understand. It's one that we truly need to practice. It's one that if we say that we are Christians, if we say that we are followers of God, it is something that we must hold as a core value personally in our personal lives. And it is, are you ready? We are worship leaders. Today we're going to be talking about worship. And so if you are anything like me, um, you love when we define words. Uh, I literally, um, that's what I do all day. I get to define words and then argue about the definitions. So um, let's define the word worship, okay? We have it up here, and it is a gesture or an act of respect or submission to human beings or God or to idols. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. You're like, whoa, 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 whoa. It, it should just be to God, well, what's wrong with this definition right here? But if we're going to be real, there are moments where our worship, where our respect, when that is um, directed at something that is not God. Now, I, I want to say something here. Um, I found that the most common word for worship in the Bible means to bow down. So worship is respect. It's when you say, wow, this is something much greater than I am, and you give it praise, and you give it worship, and you give it respect, and unfortunately, not all of the time is our worship directed straight at God. And when that happens, that means that we have something known as an idol in our life, which is the last word that we have right here. And I actually uh, defined an idol as, I think we put it up there, anything we prioritize over God. And it is used as an object of worship. So if something fills that place for God, if, if we substitute something and we bring all of our attention, all of our worship to that, that is an idol. Now, let's make this a little practical. I, I know, I know I'm, I'm in a room made full of saints that are like, oh, no, I, I don't worship God. What do you mean? Well, let, let's talk about how, um, have you ever had a friend that is just obsessed with a celebrity? That they know all the facts, like they know the birthday of the celebrity. They know like, oh, uh, I know that this celebrity's favorite meal is this, right? Like, I have friends like that. I'm like, bro, you don't even know your mom like that. Like, how do you know, like, so much information about this celebrity, right? Or what about, I know, like, grown men, right? Like, two weeks ago that their whole week was ruined because the Boston Celtics won, right? Like, like their team lost in the finals, for me, man, uh, right now there's a huge tournament in South America. It's called Copa America. And so, yes. And so, um, for me, my team is Colombia. I was born in Colombia. So when Colombia plays, man, I am there. I leave work early to go watch Colombia, right? Um, and, and so, for me, I, I prioritize these things. And, and some of these things, it doesn't mean they're bad, right? It, it doesn't mean that you can't like a celebrity. It doesn't mean that you can't like a sports team. But... If I were to say, man, I'm, uh, I haven't read my Bible, I'm, I'm going to watch Columbia play today. Or, oh, man, like this person, they're, they're, they're going to live stream a concert. <sighs> I haven't read my, no, I'm going to do that. When we begin to make decisions, when we begin to prioritize other things and place them in front of God and put those things before him, we're creating an idol. And so I know today we're talking about worship. But the front end of this, I wanted to talk about idols because I think the number one thing that stops us from being worship leaders, the number one thing that doesn't allow us to truly worship God is when we've placed idols or we've prioritized other things and we've put them before God. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to walk us through three different steps. But be before we jump into those steps... Um, 
and, and these are three different steps that I think like we, we should take t- in order for us to truly be able to say, like, man, I, I am a worship leader. But before we do that, I want us to, kind of like what uh, Ms. Sylvie was talking about last week, about us being real, I have four questions, and we can put those up there. And we're about to j- dive into a time of tag groups. And I want us to be real with it, one another. And so we have four questions right here. It's like, how do you define an idol? I know I defined an idol, but I'm, I'm curious. What did you guys think an idol was before we just spoke? And then under that understanding, I want you guys to be real with each other and, and talk to yourselves like, man, I'll be honest. I prioritize this over God. Or maybe this is an idol that I have right now in my life. Or maybe I have none. And then I want us to talk about worship with our tag groups. How do you define worship? I know I defined worship up here, but how did you guys think worship was defined? And under that understanding, I want to know, and our leaders want to know here, man, how how do you practice worship? What steps do you take in your day-to-day life? What does your worship life look like right now? So let's take a few minutes to do that, and I'll jump back up here. All right, all right, all right. Man, good conversations. Um, I was walking around listening. Um, it's funny, man. Sometimes, like, I'm just like, man, that's, that's so relatable. Um, uh, little things that I heard is devices, a lot of screen time, uh, a lot of different apps, um, uh, video games. That was huge for me. I remember when I was in middle school, too. Last service, uh, it was kind of funny. Someone indirectly said Chipotle, and I was like, you know what? I, I agree with that. That's kind of funny. Um, so uh, there's, there's things that are clawing at our attention, right? Like the enemy, the devil, always wants to bring different things to distract us so that we don't worship God. If the enemy can prevent us from doing that, he is happy, right? Mission accomplished for him. And so what is he going to do? He's going to create a bunch of things that for us, we're going to be like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll watch another reel. Okay, I'll spend more time doing this. Okay, I'll, I'll play another video game. I'll do it. And then we don't spend time with God. So if he can separate us from him, then that is his number one thing. And so what I want to do in this next um, uh, these next few minutes, this next section, is talk about, man, let's focus on three steps, three things that we can do so that we can worship better. I was uh, hanging out with uh, uh, my guys over here, the sixth grade guys, and uh, Mr. Paco brought up a great point that we are in summer, that the majority of you guys most likely have a lot of free time during the summer. And so if there is any time to practice, okay, um, prioritizing God and taking care of your, like, your schedule, it's now when you probably don't have that much thing going on. Now is a perfect time to begin doing this so that when school begins, you're already in that rhythm of jumping into the Word. So I thought that was a great point, and I think that's something that we can do. And that kind of ties into step number one. Let's put up step number one, please, to become a good worship leader. Now, I want everyone to repeat after me. I am a worship leader. That's right. So we have identified that the enemy does not want us to worship. We've identified that he is going to create different things, that he's going to put things for us to be distracted. Those things are called idols. We do not want idols in our life. And the way to not have idols, the first step If we want to be a worship leader, if we want worship to be a central part of our life, like we are called to do, the first thing we need to do is we need to prioritize God. We need to identify and say, what is the most important thing in my life? Is it God? All right. I can move on to step number two. If it is not God, all right, we're stopping right here. And we're going to say and look, okay, well, what is it? I'm going to identify what the idol is, which is what we were just doing right now. We're going to identify what is taking my attention away. Once I'm able to identify that, I'm going to be like, okay, well, next time uh, I'm tempted to go on this app. Or next time I'm tempted to um, go play this, this game with my friends. Or, or before practice, I'm going to set a rule and say, I'm going to read my Bible. And then, or, or, or I'm going to then just put a song of worship and, and worship God. and Just begin to prioritize God. The more you prioritize God, there's going to be a desire in you to continue to want to draw closer to Him. And the Word says when we draw closer to Him, He draws closer 
to us. And so step number one is prioritize God. I have a verse for us, a couple verses. It's Romans chapter 1, verse 21 uh, through 23, I believe. And so it says, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. I think we have a next verse. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like a mortal human being and birds and animals and reptiles. All right. I know the last part is not what we're doing right now, right? Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but back then people would literally make sculptures, like a wooden sculpture, and worship that, okay? That, those were the idols back then. But replace that with today, our cell phones. Replace that with your favorite sports team. Replace that with you name it. And so then at that point, this verse isn't that far off from our reality right now. Man, what did they fail to do in this verse? What are we being warned about? Is that they were foolish because they replaced our immortal God. They replaced who God is with things of this earth. What was the problem? They didn't prioritize God. They thought other things were equal to God. They thought other things were more satisfying than spending time with God. And so they began to worship those things rather than than God. Let's pull up the verse in Revelations 4, 11. Yeah, we're, we're going into Revelations, guys. All right. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Check this out. So in this scene right here, we see that these are praises being sung out to God. Look at what these praises say. It says, only you, God, you are worthy. You have all the glory. You have all this. When, when we are able to acknowledge, man, just how great God is, stop and think like, wait, that's who I am replacing for my iPhone? This is who I'm choosing to not spend my time with? And when you're able to do that, when you're able to think and, and begin to, to say like, wait, no, God is God is God. God is this immortal being, almighty, all-powerful, that is willing to speak to me and that I can speak to him and that I can give him praises. Uh, but I, I'd rather look at this uh, day in the life of a college D1 athlete on Instagram reel or on TikTok. R like, right? When you think about it like that, you're like, man, my priorities are wrong. So we need to prioritize God. And we need to acknowledge, man, who is God? Let's go on to step number two. Step number two is that we worship God with our word and our song. So once we're able to prioritize God, once we're able to say like, no, no, God is the priority in my life. God is number one. I do want to worship him. The worship that immediately we think about is worshiping God with our song, worshiping God with our words. That's when I was walking around, and, and that's why I put that question. Man, I want you guys to define worship. And the majority of people would say, well, I, I sing I sing songs to God. And, man, I'll say, today was awesome. Both services, everyone was really engaged. But there have been those moments where I see sometimes people are just like in the back. And right, like, they're not engaged. Or I'll also see this. Someone's just standing there, and they're just reading the lyrics off the screen. But, man, it needs to be a genuine worship. If, if we just sing a song, right, and, and we don't believe really what these words on the screen are saying, if we're not actually singing these to God, then really, we're, that's not worship. And I'm just going to be real with you guys. If we're just standing here, if we're just singing a song and reciting some words that are on the screen, that is not worship. Worship is when we see there and it says, God, you are glorious. I'm singing that and I'm singing that to God. I'm telling God that. Did you guys know that when we sing and when we have these moments, it's a one-on-one -on -one time between you and God. It's an opportunity for you to sing this and tell this to God. It's not just because my friends are doing it. It's not because the pastor in the back is going to look at us and do this. No, it's because, man, this is an opportunity where I can tell you, God, man, you are glorious, and I'm going to join in this song. I'm going to join in these praises, and I am praising you. That is when we have genuine worship with our song. Something else that I wanted to say, and I put with our word, because did you guys know that you can also worship even though there's no music? Did you guys know that in your own quiet time, you can just begin to write or begin to say, like, God, you are good. 
God, you are glorious. Like that verse in Revelations where it says, only you deserve all the glory. Only you deserve this. We can say that and just pray. And we can also praise and worship with thanksgiving and say, God, thank you. You are so good to me. Thank you for your mercy. So we, we prioritize God. And then we get comfortable, like, all right, I'm, I'm going to begin to worship God. And I get comfortable with the idea that I can worship him with my words and that I can worship him with my song. And that's great. But did you guys know that there's another level past that when it comes to worship? And that's step number three. And that's what I think is, is the ultimate goal for us. And it says that we worship God with our life. Man, this is something that I didn't really get until I was much older. That I thought worship just came down to me singing a song and me clapping and me jumping. But worship extends, the best form of worship is giving my all to him, my entire life. Let's read Romans 12 verse 1. And it says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. And look at this. It says, this is your true and proper worship. A little bit of background. In, uh, in the old days, way before Jesus, people would worship God. And a part of that worship, they would implement something known as animal sacrifices. They would straight up sacrifice an animal. Fortunately, we do not need to do that, right? But actually, we're called to do something and take it a little step further. We're not said, hey, if you're going to worship, you don't have to sacrifice an animal or anything like that. But actually, a true and proper form of worship is giving your life to God, is sacrificing your life. What, what does that mean, to sacrifice your life and, and for that to be proper worship? It means that when my friends are doing something that I know they're not supposed to be doing, it means that I'm going to honor God rather than choose what everyone else is doing. It means that I'm going to live out my days, do everything to worship God, and that is the ultimate form of worship I can give him. Uh, it, it is the last thing. It, it is the, um, I should say, the least we can do. Uh, something that I forgot to mention in my last point, but uh, it's something that I had been thinking of a couple months ago, and it, it's the thought that, Man, God doesn't need our worship. It's not that we're over here and we're worshiping him because like, oh, I need to do this because God needs it. God doesn't need our worship. It's that he deserves our worship. When you guys see a sports game or when you guys are at a concert and, and the person you're watching does something really well, they either hit a great note or someone scores a great goal or dunks on someone. What's the initial reaction? Oh, there's applause, people cheer, all these things. Like, you, you begin to, in a way, praise. You're like, wow, you acknowledge that something good was done, right? It's not because at that moment I'm clapping, I'm cheering, because, oh, that person needs it. I'm doing it just because that in, in of me, there's just an inward desire to praise when I see something that's well done. So if, if we do that when someone dunks a basketball... If we do that when someone hits a great falsetto, man, how much more do we need to give praise to the almighty God that did the best thing that anyone else could ever do, which is create this universe, that he, he has set the sun to, to set at a certain time in the moon, and, and he has clothed all the lilies, and he had created all the animals. When you begin to think of everything God has done, man, it's not that he needs it, it's just that man, he deserves it. Who am I to not worship God? That's why when Sobi was just saying, man, even the rocks cry out because, man, if, any, if, if anyone deserves praise, if there's any good thing that's ever been done, his goes beyond goodness. It goes into majest, majestic, limitless, like almighty things and actions that the Lord has done. Yes, he deserves our praise. He deserves us. The least we can do is to give and offer our life to him because he has done everything for us and given us everything and given us his son and salvation. This life of worship then is the only appropriate response to the mercy God has already given to us.